Okay, I'm uh, Margun Bjørnholt uh, from Norway, and I'm a visiting scholar here. I come from the Nordic Women's University. I have always been interested very broadly in the intersection between the economy and the social. Mm -hmm. um, and I wrote uh, my dissertation, which is in sociology, on uh, alternative financial institutions. But today I uh, identify as a family researcher, mm -hmm. and I can uh, point out the exact day when uh, mm -hmm. this research interest was uh, literally born, mm -hmm. because that was on the day when I gave birth to my fourth child, mm -hmm. five days after delivering the test speech for lecture for the uh, dissertation. Mm -hmm. And um, I suddenly realized that this is really an interesting sociological experience. Mm -hmm. uh, having had four children during a period in which the Norwegian welfare systems uh, around working parents mm -hmm. were changing very rapidly, mm -hmm. um, looking back and realizing how I myself had adapted to the systems and the ways of thinking that mm -hmm. were available at each point of time. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I have to look into this. Mm -hmm. So basically, I, I, I left uh, money and finance and uh, have in some way uh, managed to, to be working on uh, issues of work, family, and uh, gender equality. Mm -hmm. But I have always been working on different topics, but I would say this is my main topic today. Mm -hmm. Before I became a real academic, mm -hmm. I uh, worked as a civil servant uh, promoting women's businesses and uh, rural development in Norway. And I traveled a lot and I met a lot of women and also men who were trying to start their own businesses. Mm -hmm. And all the kinds of people who, who uh, you have to deal with in that process. And I think the most important experience that I have brought with me is that people who might be very, very different from yourself, mm -hmm. um, live complex and rich lives and are really worth listening to, and that what they want to do and what they need in order to do what they want to do might be completely different from what you had imagined when you were sitting in your office mm -hmm. thinking about this uh, in the capital. So I, I think I became immunized against the top down thinking and knowing what is best for people and uh, learned that you have to listen to people really carefully. Mm -hmm. Really, it brought me back to the field that I thought mm -hmm. I was leaving when I moved into um, family sociology. I thought I was leaving the topic of money and finance and the economy. But I was not, because of course it's there, mm -hmm. it's everywhere, and uh, these issues intersect very closely. Um, so how value is produced, what is valued, how it is valued and by whom, money, where the money goes, who controls the money, it's a feminist issue mm -hmm. and it's an economic issue. And uh, back in the 1980s, there was a lot of attention actually by feminist econo economists and by feminist legal scholars to issues of redistribution and uh, the economy and how the lacking valuation of women's work um, and care uh, intersected with the, the exploitation of nature and the lack of valuation of nature and feminist economists have continued to work, I think, in this area. But the rest of feminist scholarship moved in another direction and uh, there has been a kind of lack of attention to, to issues of redistribution. Mm -hmm. And I think, especially today, when you look at the financial sector, massively male-dominated sector where we really see how greed, uh, fraud, and uh, uh, risk accumulate at the cost of all, all of us. It's really necessary with a feminist 
analysis. And I think every issue actually has both a gender side and an economic side, and that, that needs to be dealt with. Mm -hmm. It's difficult to say. Um, the Scandinavian states are very different from the United States. Mm -hmm. In many ways, you could say that they are the kind of states that are called for within the vulnerability approach. They are the kind of caring states, providing strong supportive structures around people. At the same time, of course, they are not paradise, and there are still things that could be better. Mm -hmm. But I think perhaps um, one of the interesting uh, things is perhaps that uh, the vulnerability approach could be a way of grounding more profoundly theoretically uh, the kind of caring states and the systems that are in place and to, to perhaps think more about the relationship between the state and the citizens and to, to expand our thinking of, of how that relationship should be. Um, actually, it's not so easy to say how this approach will be received in the Scandinavian countries, and that's part of the project I am working on now, trying to, to, to study the applicability of the vulnerability approach in the Nordic uh, countries. And we will uh, have a workshop this year with the colleagues in Lund, who are working also with Professor Marta Fanneman, just to explore how could this be applicable in the Nordic countries? Mm -hmm. And how could we work with this? And we invite people from different dif disciplines and uh, with different topics just to, to see what's in it. Mm -hmm. I think the, the most shocking experience perhaps is that research is a, very slow way of changing the world, <laughs> and still I find myself trying to do that. Mm. I have for a long time been a strong admirer of Marta Feynman's mm. uh, early work, mm. and uh, but it has not been directly reflected in my own work because mm. I have been working uh, with men and masculinities and. Uh, and I've not uh, had the opportunity to directly involve with, uh, with her work. But when we met a couple of years ago, I uh, was introduced to her more recent work on the vulnerability approach, which I found uh, very interesting and also challenging. And I also learned that she is a very uh, generous academic mm -hmm. and very inviting and uh, sharing her ideas with other people, listening to how, how other people would work with these ideas. And I decided that I would, in my next project, uh, try to engage more directly with her and mm -hmm. uh, with uh, the vulnerability approach. And on a very practical level, I am uh, writing on a paper on women's economic uh, citizenship and the vulnerability approach. So hopefully it will be a publishable article. <laughs> uh, on a deeper level, I think it, uh, it's a very interesting experience to, to be here and to be part of such a vibrant uh, academic community and to, to meet other people from all over the world actually who are, who are attracted to the vulnerability approach and see how it could be put to use in mm -hmm. other contexts. So I hope to bring with me more than just the article that I'm writing. Mm -hmm.